All right. Well, welcome everyone to Going the Distance, the Rocky Series and Creed podcast. We are now recording and live recording. And if you're joining us live, welcome. Uh, this is episode 17 of the Creed film, Creed Part 1, or the first Creed film. And uh, Katie, I believe you have the emails. I, did you get a chance to look I, at it yet? <laughs> I, um, I saw that there were two emails. Um, I was kind of running around, so I didn't read them beforehand. So we'll see if I can read today. Okay. So the first one is from Greg the First. Ryan, Kyle, and Katie, I hope the new year is treating you all well. I just finished listening to episode 15, and I have to say it was a small thrill to have esteemed podcaster Doug Greenberg mention me in his email to you about the Victor Cafe. Oh, sorry. Sorry. My bad. My bad. There you go. Keep going. It's working. Sorry. Some, some echo? Okay. No, it's gone. Okay. It's gone. I got it. <laughs> um, uh, so for reasons I cannot explain, I had stopped listening to Rocky Minute at some point last year, but have recently re- have recently started listening again to try to get through their back catalog before they start Rocky Three. I also heard Doug as a guest on the Big Screen Sports podcast during their Rocktober celebration of the Rocky films, and he was fantastic on that on that podcast also. As for the GTD podcast, all I really want to say this week is that in my personal opinion, you are about to start talking about one of the best stretches of any film in the franchise. Yeah. Oh yeah, Greg likes he likes Creed, doesn't he? He does. He's our he's the Creed app. And we love Creed too, but he Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. he doesn't really he really likes it. He doesn't quite find the fault that we do, but he does acknowledge it's because we are fine tooth combing it that those things will come out. But yes. So Greg goes on to say, you finished episode 15 with Adonis telling Rocky, so if I fight, you fight. And I think this movie is pretty much perfect from that moment Mm -hmm. until the movie ends. Wow. He says, since the very first time I ever saw the Rocky movies, it has always been my it has always been my opinion that the best section of any Rocky movie is in Rocky 2. When Adrian wakes up from her coma and tells Rocky to win until the end. That might be a slightly controversial take, but I stand by it. And that is why Rocky II has always been at the top of my list as favorite Rocky movie. But the final 40 minutes of Creed that you are about to discuss comes really close. I know that inevitably there will be the things that can be nitpicked, especially when you analyze it as closely as you do. Mm -hmm. However, However, I'm really looking forward to these next few episodes and hope that you three find it to be as good as I do. Thanks as always, Greg the First. Yeah, thanks, Greg. That was an awesome email. Uh, there's nothing wrong with saying that uh, in the Rocky II moment when he, when Adrian says win is a, one of the greatest moments in the franchise. That's That would actually be kind of a fun pull. Like, well, I think he was saying from that point on. Oh. The, the, that yeah, the rest from, I was saying. I, from that point oh. gotcha. until the end of the movie, that, that that was like the best stretch of movie. And now gotcha. I think he's saying that this, this stretch of movie that we're going to cover – and Creed is rivaling it. Gotcha. I think. No, I, th- I think you're absolutely right. Uh, I'm multitasking and I missed that. I apologize. <laughs> Everything's working, by the way, that we talked about beforehand. Um, oh, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah. Hey, well, Greg, we, we love you. You're, you are Greg the first. That's It was a nice email. And I think, uh, what, actually, when I was reading that, when he sent it to me, I was a little worried because we already recorded part of that part of the film that he loves so much. I was like, did we really give it uh, a lot of love? I think we did because we talked about the training sequence and we actually really talked about how that ending part of that training sequence was one of the best parts of the film when mm-hmm. he, when Adonis is yelling up at Rocky and Rocky puts his hands up in the air from the window. I love that moment. So that, I agree. This part of Onward is really the highlight of the film. I have a favorite. Yeah. My favorite part. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but Creed is not my favorite. You've said so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, but, but one of my, but my, what redeemed it in my eyes is, is coming up. So, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I think I like Creed the most of the three of us. I Do you, so. Kyle? Oh, yeah, I don't I like think I knew lot. that. Uh, I wouldn't say Creed's my favorite, but it's like, it's up there. I really like it. Like I, it, I don't know. Like, it's a lot of people. No, it, it's, it's uh, not in a bad way, but it's. I mean, look, we always say, or I always say, I want the Rocky character to always be loved. So if you, if people love Creed and they love it and Rocky's in it, great. It's all gravy yeah. and good news. I don't want people to hate the film. I, not at all. I love the film too, but I, but it's, it is it is interesting to see when I see rankings of the Rocky franchise, how high Creed is for a lot of people. Top four to five, like at least top half uh, easily. It's just that the others are so good. Guys, 
Say it again. I think I differ from you guys in that I actually prefer this over Creed Two. Mm, okay. Why is that? Uh, I don't know. Like I, I, I just when I watched Creed Two, I was like, I don't like this. Like it's now, not, it's not that interesting. Like it just didn't do it is, for me. Are you? Is Rocky Four not up there in your ranking, Kyle? No, it's not. Uh, so well, that's actually, why, probably. Kid, as a kid, I really liked Rocky Four. Because it's, it's action packed, it's extreme, like it's over the top. Like I really, that appealed to me at that time. But like now, I I don't like it as much. Hmm. That's fair. Yeah, that I'm is not fair. That if you like Rocky Four, you're like juvenile or something. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> is, you, is no, Rocky Four is quite popular. It people, is. A lot of people like Rocky Four. That's the two. It's Rocky Four and Rock. I mean, the first Rocky that. Is often the yeah. debate for first or second. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I think I'm I, honestly. I think if I was to be honest, I think it, I'm the same way. Rocky, the first Rocky is my favorite, and Rocky Four is my second favorite. For two, too, Ryan. for two completely different reasons. They have two different. Uh, basically, you got your meal and you got your dessert. That's the easiest way to say it. Well, technically, Rocky Two is probably my second favorite, just because it sort of has to be. But like from a rewatchability, sure. Rocky Four wins. I think. Like, I'll rewatch that over the first one just because it's so easy to pick up at any place. Sure. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. But I, I actually know. like three better than four, even. Say that again? Like, four is pretty low. I, I even like three better than four. Like, four is pretty low for me. Three is my least favorite. I know. That's funny. I, a friend of mine texts me um, memes about three. And three is clearly his favorite. And he's like, one of these days, you're going to come over to my side and realize that three is the best. I'm like, you're insane. Wow, the best. That's yeah. a hot take. Yeah. <laughs> and I love three. I love all the Rocky films, but mm-hmm. like everything, there's a ranking. I, three for me, is just, it's aged the worst. It jumped the shark a little bit. Uh, and Rocky five, despite its flaws, I think it righted the ship of the franchise. That's the whole, That's why I, I hold in higher regard. Rocky five is creeping up for me. Like It used to be rock bottom. And then yeah. it's, yeah, I don't know, like it's 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 flawed, very it's, it's very flawed. But it's, it's still like, it has, has some, I, I like it still. Like and I, I would I used to hate Rocky Five. Like I, I I used to do like the Rocky. I had the Rocky box set of one to five, mm-hmm. and I would occasionally do the Rocky marathons. And then it was just like, do I have to do five? Like, do I really have to do this? But yeah, I don't know. All right, so now we got another. Uh, I sent you um, a message that I got on Twitter, but I want to make sure I give this guy the shout out if you're okay reading that. It's a oh, picture. Oh, so this is a twit. Oh, oh. Yeah. A screen capture, right? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. T- yeah. Um, so Jared Talkstein or Talkstein. Not sure. Sure. Um, mess- <laughs> this is a message on Twitter. Yeah, it was Brian? really cool that I got from. Yeah, yeah. I want to give okay, him a shout so out. He, he says, Jared says, Hey, Ryan, my name is Jared, and I've followed your Going the Distance podcast for several years. I love it. Katie is a fantastic addition to the show. Me and two other friends have our own podcast called The Hyperspace, podcasting in the 25th century. We focus on pop culture from the 1970s and 80s, and we are all guys in our mid-40s who grew up in that golden age of entertainment. We just started a miniseries called Babbling with Balboa, and we're talking about each Rocky and Creed film. <gasps> You're definitely an influence. And I hope it's okay to name drop your show of on course. a future episode. Episode. Anyway, I thought you might be interested in listening to our first Babbling with Balboa episode, which is available now under our Hyperspace podcast feed. We cover Rocky 1 and 2 in the first episode. Rocky 3 is coming soon. I wonder if it's in bad taste to promote our podcast in the Going the Distance Facebook group. Question. If that's not cool, I totally understand, but I'm hopeful our podcast could find more listeners that way. People of like minds. We're just ham and eggers like you guys were. Anyway, I love the show and appreciate you taking time to read this. Take care, Jared Talkstein. Or Talkstein. All right. So thank you, Jared, so much. I did listen to their their first discussion. It was Rocky 1 and 2 that they covered. And, you know, okay, for the record, I do say Rocky 1. I hate it when people, and I've seen it on Twitter, it's like, a true fan doesn't call Rocky Rocky 1. And the reason why I say that is so people know that I'm talking about the film. And not mm-hmm. the character, because it gets confusing if I just say, "Oh, I love Rocky." Yeah, I, 
I'm talking about the film, not the character. Well, I love both, right. but it's just for conversation purposes and discussion purposes. I just now when I write it out, I, you know, I just say Rocky. I don't right. put Rocky one. But f- yeah, anyways, so they did a they, they did a, a a really good job. So Jared, this is for you and really cool. Okay, I got two things, Jared. Well, great. Thank you for reaching out to me. But uh, what what took you so long? You know, this is the first time I heard from this guy. He's been listening for years. <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, Jared, Jared, that was really cool of you reaching out and good luck on your podcast. Um, here's some good news, bad news. The good news is, is I enjoyed your podcast and I can't wait to hear you guys cover the rest of the series. And so everyone take a listen to that, uh, episode, uh, and to that podcast, what was it called the hyperspace podcast, the hyperspace podcasting in the 25th century. Yeah. And they have a great logo, uh, by the way. They have a really cool logo. Yeah. The mini series, uh, the babbling with Balboa. That's a cute. Cute yeah, it name. is. And they have yeah. a great production. They do uh they do just like us. I wonder if he took the idea from me, which is fine if he did. Uh <laughs> they uh, they they insert like clips from the film when they're talking about it, so that's cool. Um yeah, they did a great job, him and his other two hosts. But here's the bad news. We're Ham and Agers too. And uh, you'll probably get maybe three other listeners <laughs> from, jumping from our little Ham and Agers show to yours. But if anyone does, go check them out. We uh, we love sharing the love. There's never you can never have uh, enough people talking about Rocky. And um, and they're only doing it for a little bit. They're doing like a mini series. They'll be talking about other stuff later. But th- this is what they're focusing on now, and they're doing a great job. So check them out. That's cool. On the uh, I don't know why I just thought of this, but the ham and egger thing. All the years I've been ro- watching Rocky movies, I've never heard that phrase used actually ever until I started listening to podcasts about like Rocky movies. I've I've like never heard that phrase outside of. Oh, was awesome. it a thing? Have you guys like was that a phrase that was used? I never in use your it. vernacular. I never use it outside. Like I started using it on myself literally because I started doing a Rocky podcast. It was just mm-hmm. a way of like I, I love uh, making fun of myself, and so it was mm-hmm. an easy way. Like when you do a podcast, a lot of people can sometimes get in their own heads. Like I'm a podcaster, which I'm totally I'm nobody, and it keeps me and all of us. I think it keeps us level headed. Like we're just small time hammonagers, just having fun, and so that's how I. I yeah, we're not Apollo Creed. I mean, he's the best. We're just Ham and Eggers. Yeah, but I, I wonder if that is a real expression. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I guess you could Google it. I think that's kind of what you're asking, right, Katie? Well, I'm sure that it is, but like there were there are things like, yeah. Do you mean like, or is it like a Rocky E, like a Rocky? Yeah, it's a good question. Or, so. or, yeah. Yeah, if any but. of our listeners know, let us know. Hey, I got a question for you guys. Can you hear me if I do this? I'm going to mute my microphone and then I'm going to cough. Did you hear that? No, okay, I no. apologize. One of our episodes, because I'm still getting over this cold, it's gone, but there's just like after effects of a scratchy throat. I accidentally, on one of our episodes, I thought I was muting the mic, but I was muting the software, not the hardware, and I was still coughing over the I thought I was muted, and I felt terrible. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, I was just coughing over these guys. It was really hard to edit. But anyways, stupid side note. Well, we didn't, we must not have, I didn't notice anyway. Oh, okay. All right. All I'm right. So that's anything that my, my own comments and. All right. Over time, so. <laughs> okay, so that's it for mail. That's it. That was yep. it for mail. That's cool. And uh, nothing new on Twitter, but follow us on Twitter if you guys want to follow us on Twitter. Uh, and also uh, like us on Facebook, Going the Distance Rocket Series Podcast. Just Google it and it will come up. But uh, join our Patreon to help pay for the fee, get early releases of audio, and to get the video releases. And uh, yeah, let's go into the film. Kyle, you called it. We're at the press conference I, f- I forget this completely by the way in, in liverpool that. aren't we in liverpool now liverpool. okay let's check yeah it out. hey stop oh whoa, whoa, yeah yeah stop i want to point out something here. Oh, of course. That's, why, kind of that's quick, why we're doing this. Nitpicky detail. But as we, they, they showed the venue, which I don't recognize. Uh, I've never been to Liverpool. Um, I lived in England for two years, but never in Liverpool. Um, they had that siren sound outside. Okay, yeah. That's not a English siren. It has like a distinct noise and it's not that. That, that like sounds like maybe Adrian could correct me because it's been forever since I lived there. But that sounds like when you're in Paris or something like that. Like, I, I wonder if someone 
like edited that sound in and just didn't know. But mm. that's like one of the things to. It's like a weird thing to me that didn't seem authentic. But I, I could be off on that. Oh, I saw to throw that in there real quick. Yeah, that I, is interesting. Also, I didn't know you lived in uh, England for two years. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. something we, again we'll talk about after the show for sure. We'll give you the deets on why that was. That know. picture I sent you, Katie, that was in England. Oh. Oh, okay. Good call. Cool. Good okay. call there, Kyle. All right. Yeah, pictures is a thousand words, right? Mm-hmm. All right. But yeah, that siren sound is very British. I don't know why it doesn't remind me. Yeah, they use it in the films all the time. It's not British, though. Like, it's like, uh, that's like a French siren. Okay. I think. Like, it's, because, uh, I, I don't know. Like, it seems like when I lived there, there was always, like, an ambulance or something. I lived in London, and there was always, like, sirens everywhere. But it didn't sound like, eh, they like didn't have that sound. But like in movies, when you're in Paris or somewhere, it has that siren sound. Mm. And I wonder if like someone edited that sound and thinking, oh, it's European. Therefore, like, oh, they're in Liverpool um, and just put it in there. I don't know. Okay. Good catch. Place looks like a church. It's like an art museum. Hey, beautiful. The fight starts. In about two minutes, as soon as he shows up, he's going to start on you, okay? Okay, so let's talk real quickly there. So he says the fight starts in about two minutes, and when he gets here, he's just going to lay it into. Um, I guess Adonis really hasn't had a big-time press conference before. No, was never. There, what, there was something small, wasn't there, for the Sperino fight? Or did I make that up? They didn't show it. Okay. Um, and then the Tijuana goes without saying. Yeah, yeah. Now, of course, they have to do this for the film in order for us to see it. But you think that on like the seven-hour flight to England and all the time they've had prior to this moment, they would have discussed this press conference. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. <laughs> Again, they, they have to. He has to say that here so the audience hears it. Uh, but it's like he's he's absolutely right. Uh, like the psychological warfare, like Muhammad Ali really like it's not like he made it up at these press conferences, but he really changed the nature of how these boxing press conferences went with like trash talking and psyching someone out, and uh, now that's a big thing. So, uh, yeah, Donis is kind of at a disadvantage because he's never done this before ever. True, however, pretty Ricky Conlon has to be on his best behavior because didn't he get – isn't that why his last fight got got pulled out because he couldn't handle himself? He punched the guy at the press conference? Or yeah. maybe it was the weigh-in, one of the two. It was the weigh-in. Okay. But, like, whatever. It's still, like, the same idea, though. Yeah. I think you're right. Like... All right. No, yeah, let's, uh, well, let's watch it. I forget how Conlon tears into him, but I think he tears into him a little bit. I suspect he will. No, oh, he's looking uh, looking pretty good there. He does clean up nice. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you all for coming. Let's get straight into questions. Uh, young lady to the left. Conlon, can we expect any more fireworks at the weigh-in? I've been doing some anger management classes and, you know, trying to control that temper of mine. i just got to make sure he forgets it all by Saturday night. Okay, next question. Young man in the glasses. What about the contrast between you two? You, the overnight success, versus Conlon's rags to riches background? Nothing happened overnight. I've been fighting for some time now. That's exactly how it happened for this guy. He's an overnight success, never had a damn fight in his life. He's got this shot because he found that name last night. One more. There's a lot of talk about legacy in this fight. John All right, so good question so far from the uh, reporters. Yes. Like, uh, they're the obvious questions. Like, you have to ask those questions. Um, I, I found Conlon's response really weird. Because hmm. he's like, the only reason he got this is because of his name. It kind of cuts at his own legitimacy. It's like, he's like, I'm fighting a bum. I'm fighting someone who's easy. Hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm doing this because of this guy's name. Like, it, you know, like, if you really look at it critically, he's... 
He's insulting himself as much as he's insulting Adonis. I don't think he's a critical thinker, but yeah, that's a really no. good point. <laughs> well, Apollo was the same. This, again, is Rocky The Force Awakens. Uh, we have this, kind of the same beats here. We've got the champion uh, of this area. Well, is he? I, I keep... I, this is my nativity about the whole boxing titles because it seems like there's more now there was during Rocky's time in the 70s. Uh, is he the world champion? Like, is he the heavyweight world champion? Is there anyone higher than Pretty Boy right now in the world? Well, he's the light heavyweight champion. Light heavyweight, okay. But there's there's different sanctioning bodies that uh, have titles. Right. And there's like there's matrons like IBF, uh, WCBC, like there's like a bunch of them. And so like when you say someone is the undisputed champion, what that means is they have uh, the title from all the recognized bodies. That's why you'll have guys carrying like several belts. Right. Each belt is like the title from like one of the sanctioning bodies. And so if you're not an undisputed champion, that means there's someone else who also has a title. So you kind of share. Uh, and then often uh, like Ring Magazine or something will do their top 10 fighters. And so like you might have one of the titles, but then you're not the top guy. And then there's the lineal one, which is not an act. It's the it's the belt that they show in like the Rocky movies, like the red, white, and blue. That there's a belt that actually doesn't look like that, and that's the lineal title holder belt, and that just means you beat the last champion. Hmm. So like, there's no sanctioning body that that gives you that. All right, well there you go. I didn't know that last bit, that, that the lineal part. That's very interesting. Kyle, he knows about these things. He he does. What 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 questions would you ask Ryan? You, uh, well, if you were a oh. reporter at the press conference, you know. asked if they were fair questions. Well, I think they're. I yeah, I guess they're. they I think Kyle's answer about them being a little bit like on the nose for the audience, probably for us as an audience. Like it's kind of again speaking to the story. Hey, he just found out who he was. Hey, is he really the champion? And it's it's showing again that Adonis is the underdog despite his physique and his anger or whatever it is this guy is an underdog he kind of came out of nowhere he's fighting the big leagues he's only been doing barroom brawling all this time and now he's so i guess it's still kind of plain to us even as a viewer that oh the cards are stacked against adonis he's getting on his he's getting defensive right away too and that and it's he, i don't blame him for being a little defensive he's like oh i've been fighting my whole life and and uh pretty boy's like where who you know, so it's a great scene, great moment. Well, he's not wrong. That's the thing. Like Conlon's not wrong. It just makes him look like an idiot, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, yeah, well, that's what I meant. It's like Apollo. Apollo, like he picked Rocky's name out of a hat, out of a book, and because he liked the name Italian Stallion, and 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 he was kind of blah blah blase about it too. So even though it was going to be like sort of like an it was an exhibition, it was a real fight, a sanctioned fight for the title, but. Uh, Unlike Apollo, Pretty Boy is like thinks this whole thing's a joke and wants to get this over with because he's just got to do it so he can get his kids' money before he goes to jail. Whereas Apollo's like it's gonna be a fun show. Yeah, and then Apollo tried to play up Rocky a bit. It's like because like in the Apollo, I guess press conference, like that thing they Rocky and Adrian and Polly were watching on TV. Uh, someone says like. But what do you think about fighting someone who has virtually no chance of winning? Right. And Paul's like, if American history proves one thing, American history proves everybody's got a chance to win. Haven't you guys ever heard of Valley Forge or Bunker Hill? Well, if you can't box, I'm sure you can cook. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what would you? What yeah, you like being pretty like uh, condescending. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, continue. Johnson, can you speak to that? Yeah, I've been working on trying to build my own legacy. You know, legacy. To... Where we at some kind of comedy club? The guy next to him. No, that's what we're talking about. Legacy, and I'm cuffed in that cloth. My father worked on the docks. His father was heavyweight champion of the world. People like Silver Spoon over here. You don't know nothing place. about me. I know enough about you. I'm here now, though. Found I'm here now. Here. You are false creed. All right, I'll show you right now. My pops ain't here. Hey, 
All right. There you go. False oh. Creed. False Creed. It, of course, Adonis has got to get react that way too, right? Because he he does he has anger management issues and he doesn't have self control. Because if he, if he was cool and collected, what he just say is, "Look, I don't care what he says about me. I like, I'll prove myself in the ring Saturday night or whatever." What's worse, Done. False Creed or Baby Creed? <laughs> <laughs> there have been oh, several yeah. of those mentions. I don't know. I don't know. They're pretty, from his perspective, equal. Uh, are either of your parents like big wigs in their own fields? Yeah, not my, my mom. Kind of but it's just kind of funny. I'm trying to think. Like, and I love my dad. I love my mom. It's funny. It's like someone came up to me. You're a false. You're a false Rebalcan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess <laughs> I, 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 I. You're a baby Rebalcan. Yeah, that's true. I, I guess I am his son. I'm. I mean, I'm older now, but you know, there's. I don't have any. Le- there's no legacy that. I, maybe I'm building my own legacy right now. But no, I. I have no shadow above me, for better or for worse. I, we all, we all, I've always made my own way, and my dad made his own way, and that's the way it's been in my family for generations. A bunch of, a bunch of just. People just paying the bills and making their own way. No legacies. That was a really quick press conference, though. Mm. Like, there were two two questions asked, and it was over. <laughs> well, the fight broke yeah, out. I did like, try and calm them down. It was like, oh, they're upset. Let's get out of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. Two fighters going at each other. At the, yeah. But, yeah, like, I think if, if, uh, if I were in the media or something like that, I would probably suspect there'd be questions like, even to Conlon saying, like, what do you think about uh, him being trained by Rocky Balboa? Mm. Or something like that. Like, try to bring Rocky, because Rocky's a big draw to this, right? Like, that's probably another reason why Adonis got the fight in a lot of people's mind. So, and then that, that question would be asked, like, Adonis, do you think you deserve to be here? Like, what makes you think you've earned the right to do this fight? How do you expect to fight someone like him when he has so much more experience than you have? Or um, you can ask Conlon. It's like, uh, have you been distracted uh, in this fight? Are you taking it seriously? If you know, you know, you're going to be going to jail after this. Like, you know, questions yeah. like that. Well, those, those are really those are good questions, <laughs> but they weren't. Yeah. Indeed. Probably for the space of what? Where are we in the timeline here? We're. Yeah, I guess there's just not enough time to film, really. We're already at the hour and 40-minute mark. I wonder if this is Adonis' first time under the country, other than Mexico. Oh, yeah, I mean, probably. I mean, probably. I, don't, I don't go to Europe very often. <laughs> yeah, but like even Marianne's family, they could have gone on vacation oh, or something. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting. Oh, then maybe, you know, and maybe, I yeah. I'm sure that with that kind of money they had, they went somewhere. All right, it's just for our listeners on the uh, audio. Uh, there was a knock at the door. Adonis was in his room just thinking uh, about whatever, and then it, Rocky knocked on the door. Oh, you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Just couldn't sleep. Yeah, me either. It's okay. I sit down. Of course. Donnie, I'd like you to do me a favor when all this is over. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. It's not important. What favor? Do you think having cancer just to motivate your training? Okay. <laughs> hey, He's th- gonna ask him to to have a fight. Just just the two of them. No media. No nothing. Rocky and Adonis. <laughs> age, yeah, why not? For beauty. Apollo. He's not here, so you're gonna step in as proxy. <laughs> That'd be funny. But I wonder how many other uh, Rocky uh, watchers, when they saw that, what fever went through their heads? But just uh, we'll lock it in, okay? Yeah, you got it. There you go. <clears throat> you okay? Huh? Yeah, what? Come on, you keep looking at the door. No, no. Mm-mm. Just really quickly, the um, because Rocky has a like a stocking cap on, uh, in which is unusual probably because he, uh, his hair loss from the cancer, mm-hmm. it really 
does not suit him. <laughs> it points out, I don't know if you guys have ever noticed, he has a super strange head shape. <laughs> have, you, have you guys ever noticed like his the back of his head is really flat? And oh. I now, especially in this shot that Ryan's paused on, yeah. but previously I hadn't noticed yeah, that. And he does have a strange head shape. It's really flat in the back, and this majorly <laughs> accentuates that. It's not Jamie, as would you like to learn a Canadian word? Yeah. Oh. What that called? Toque? A toque, yes. <laughs> now, I learned that from you guys listening to the podcast. Oh. I, I didn't know that. I did not know that prior Oh, wow, you're learning stuff. That's amazing. We're actually edu education. That's where you're going to get it. It's here. Instamatically. Instamatically, yeah. <laughs> it's funny because they're, they're doing like a slight humor play thing with the looking at the door. But one thing I've always really liked about Rocky is it's like the jokes on Rocky are not like – there are some exceptions to this because they have – but like they're often kind of more subtle. Yeah. Or like they're not like – slapstick type of jokes which I, I i prefer so yeah there's a cute little scene here so what we should yeah again for our uh, itunes listeners so they're sitting on the bed and rocky keeps looking at the door expecting something and adonis says why do you keep looking at the door and rocky's like i'm not looking at the door but he keeps looking at the door so of course we know what's about to happen and let's watch this part happen i've got something to say about it obviously <laughs> Rocky, who's that? How you doing, Bianca? What are you doing here? Out to a killer. <laughs> oh, listen, you guys yeah, just yeah, keep. Yeah, yeah. Thing. yeah. The legs, yeah. Support, gotcha. So, of course, Rocky reminds Bianca and Adonis as he's walking away, hey, guys, uh, have a conversation, but don't weaken any legs. She's like, you can still do stuff to me, though. <laughs> I had forgotten about, like, this. Yeah. I don't remember this part of the movie, honestly. It's vague for me. It is. Uh, but do you see what, again, Rocky Force Awakens? I keep saying it, but what's happening here? What do we have here? Well, this is the Adrian sees him uh, in the cabin. Yeah. Oh, the, in, like, or, or whatever. Yeah, or whatever part of whatever the films. Adrian's showing, or Bianca's now showing, I support you. I'm here for you. Of course, oh, this is going to help. This is a thing off of Adonis' mind. Oh, because him, him and Bianca had that falling out. Last we saw them together, he was banging on the door, and she turned off her hearing aid. We haven't seen them together. Maybe they've had a conversation, obviously, but they haven't. That's the last time? Wow. I never... I never made that connection for some reason. I just thought she just didn't come for some reason. And this was like a nice little surprise. Well, you know why that is, Kyle? Because their relationship is so forgettable. I was thinking that, like, I had forgot, I had forgotten about it, too, until uh, Ryan brought it up. And then I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good point, Katie. I think you're right. <laughs> you know what's funny? If they had shown this whole fight and sequence without Bianca even being there, I, I bet you people would have been like, oh, yeah. You know, there would have been any, yeah. But now mm -hmm. seeing her there, we're all like, oh, she's here to give her moral support and for Adonis to weaken her legs maybe after the fight. So, all right, let's see their conversation. I'm sure it's going to be inspiring, so let's check it out. Sorry, Greg <laughs> the First. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, there is no conversation. I, I will say, though, the, a positive note there of course. was Adonis's face. That was a good, like, it seemed pretty genuine. Like, the look on his face, how, like, giddily happy he was. Oh, he yeah. couldn't hold back his smile. Like, that seemed, that was, like, a genuine, that was genuine. Yeah. There you I go. Agree. Yeah. I agree. A creed. Are we ready to fight? This is it? What are we doing here? Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the fight now. There, there's not much happening. My favorite part's coming up. Does he have to take a poop again in this one, or no? I can't remember. <laughs> Actually, I don't know how much time elapses 
before it. I God, I don't remember. Well, there's still a half hour film left, including probably seven eight minutes of credits. So at least twenty. Mm-hmm. Well, like the fights are usually twenty something minutes. Yeah. Okay. What we'll probably do is obviously we're not going to. Uh, we can start part of the fight, but we're not going to eat if we start the fight. We're not. Yeah, I didn't realize we were yeah. that, that close, yeah. but because sometimes the fights usually take two episodes, anyways. There's some pre-episode stuff. I think or so. Or pre-fight yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah. So for our listeners, uh, they've walked into their change room, locker room, and on the bench is a gifted box there waiting for Adonis to open up. Maybe it's a diaper. <laughs> <laughs> for baby Creed. <laughs> Can we have enough surprises for one weekend? That's not me. And this is from his mom. It says, build your own legacy, Ma. So, really kind of cool oh. moment here. Oh. What's your thoughts there, Kyle? You, sorry, I, sorry. I I never thought of this before, but it's like build your own legacy. Here's the shorts that your father wore all the time and the ones he died in. The exact opposite of building your own legacy. <laughs> this is it- like- that's a really good point. Uh, however, it says, like, aren't these the shorts that say Creed on one side and Johnson on the other side? Maybe. But, yeah, I guess it acknowledges. But you're like, right. Also, uh, like, the the gift from Marianne here, this is really the, she's really more the Adrian character. Like, I, mm. I approve now. Or yeah. I, you know, you have my blessing now. Okay. Is like, don't you guys think? Like, it's more so for... I, told, I, I 100% agree with him. 100% because it's like... Bianca never really had a problem mm-hmm. with him fighting. Bianca had a problem with him being mm-hmm. an ass or a jerk. So, <laughs> uh, and his mom's the one who had a problem with just his whole thing he's doing here. The entire thing, though, the fighting, everything she has a problem, had a problem with. And so it's like her approval is the one that he really needs. Um, or should want because like he actually has a long standing relationship with her. He's not just this person he met in, in his building that he's having sex <laughs> with now. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I, I think if it were me, if I were him in that situation, given my relationship there, I would definitely feel a lot better knowing that she's cool with this. I know she's watching the fight now. I know she's cheering for me. She's on my side. And I like that she got him the Creed shorts as much as I just like crapped all over <laughs> that just now. Yeah. It was okay. just a note. Why did you put that note in there? Like make your dad proud or something. I don't know. Maybe put that in there. But it's like make your own legacy by wearing something that is like yeah. so tied into your father. The note didn't make sense. <laughs> well, I have a question. I'm sure Greg would oh. give me shit for saying that, but whatever. I have a question though. We're talking about the shorts. Now, did Apollo wear those, or did she have those made in the likeness of Apollo for Adonis? She had them made. It's very clear they're the new style of shorts. They're yeah. they're the longer, baggier yeah. shorts, which I don't like. I like old school short, tighter shorts. <laughs> clear. Ooh. I mean, you can see like in there, or no, just no, I was even basket, like even the me, where you could see more of the. Yes, yeah. like you can see more of their body, and it's not just like bagginess. Like anyway, I, think I that's kind I, of racist to be honest. <laughs> no, it's not. I think it's a little bit racist. I think I, that, no, I think not, 
once more African Americans got into sports, the baggier clothing came in, and like now you're saying it's not cool. I, uh, in the '60s, no, that I, I, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, I have a question about the shorts because now this is something that's always bothered me watching Rocky movies where they gift shorts as like a it's it's the the sentiment is perfect and it makes for a great movie but if you are about to go into a huge boxing or like a big fight wouldn't you have already had like your like are you wanting to wear a brand new pair of shorts that you've never tried on before that you've not like worked like or is that not bother you guys at all I think well, that's like a woman's thing <laughs> So I'm just like, that's a pair of shorts. I don't know if it like fits well. Like how they fit, how you yeah. want to be able to move around in them just so. I, it, it would bug the crap out of me. Thanks, but I'm wearing my shorts. I'd already like. You know, it's interesting because it's like a lot of athletes are superstitious now that they think about it. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, if, if you're connected to your equipment, like your shorts, like that, and then someone's like, "Here, where are these?" You be like, "I don't want to wear those." <laughs> so uh, I, like my I haven't watched them, and yeah. no. I've to me, as long as they Ryan... don't care, as long as they fit well enough. Like, like if they're like, way too really? tight or something, I'd be like, I'd be bothered, or too loose, I'd be bothered. But if they fit okay, I'd be like, whatever, I don't care. And they look, they look fine. That's so you know, as long as they're not like really bizarre looking, then I'm, it doesn't bother me. I guess I'm just confused. I didn't realize again. Are are those Apollo shorts? Yes or no? No. Okay. Because you no, mentioned you no, mentioned the mission because she, you, like she had them made to look like them. Okay. Because I think Kylie said something about him Apollo dying in those shorts or something. Was that just you're just being funny or? Well, that style of shorts. Oh, okay. Well, that style of shorts. The, like, the American the flag striped shorts. His, yeah. His iconic fight with Rocky was in the Stars and Stripes right. shorts. Rocky had a bunch of his fights. Like, the whole past is tied up in those freaking shorts. Like, every Rocky movie, except right. Rocky Two, yeah. has them in there. So it's like... Well, he never wore them Rocky... He, he, didn't wear them, he didn't wear them He didn't wear them Rocky fight. Three or Two. He didn't wear those shorts to Rocky Four. After Paul's death. Rocky Three, he wore those he, shorts. He wore them, yeah. He wore them after... In the second Clubber fight, didn't he? Because yeah, that's when did. that's when, oh. yeah, that's when Apollo gifted them to him. Oh, gifted that's the shorts. So to him. weird. I just like talking about like Mandela Mandela effect. That's weird. I, I just keep seeing the gold shorts in my brain, but of course. Okay, I remember that scene now, of course. You said yeah, make sure you wash them before you get back. Of course. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, these are the colors. No, was it the like shorts the or the, the past. Hmm. These are the colors, whatever. In that in that scene we are made to believe they were actually Apollo's shorts because he says, make sure you wash them before you give them back. Mm -hmm, that's right. But, that's right. Yeah, those were Apollo. I'm pretty sure. Which is, Apollo clearly would wear a bigger size. <laughs> Not because of what you guys are thinking, but <laughs> just because he was a bigger man. Like, he was just like a, you know, he's... Yeah, he probably had a yeah. larger waist. Um, um, but again, like, this, this yeah, wearing someone know, else's shorts like that, or man. brand new shorts that you've never... Ryan, would that not bother you? You'd just be like, oh, okay. I'll no, I, I would have a hard time wearing someone else's gym clothes for sure. Okay, I'm just looking at the Rocky. No, but even if they're brand yeah. new. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I It's all weird to me, the whole shorts thing. But it's good. It's, it, it ties. We see every character to some degree has worn either the literal shorts of the previous Creed or the Stars and Stripes. Even Tommy wore them. Like, everyone's worn the Stars and Stripes shorts in this franchise. I for, kind of forgot about the Tommy one. Yeah, he yep. wore he wore them too when he won the champion. He was wearing them. It's kind of well, weird. not everyone. But... Did he keep them? Did, did he give them back to Rocky? I don't know. We discussed like, that. How did, how did that go? We actually discussed that in one of our episodes. Go you back did. and listen. Yeah, yeah. You did. You did. That was what was the verdict? Yes, he did. The only verdict we could think of is that uh, uh, at the time. Uh, well, yeah, we we have to assume he gave him back. We have to assume he gave him back. He seems like too much of a dick well, to do that, though. 
Yeah. Like, it'd be awkward conversation. Like mm. it could have been lawyer to lawyer, representatives to representatives. It could, that's what it could have been. It said, look, you know, give us, give us that. But it would have literally happened after the fl- like. It's oh, sorry, it would have happened like after the street fight. <laughs> it's kind of weird. I guess it was probably no, lo- probably lawyer. For sure. for sure, he kept them. I he definitely kept those shorts. Rocky wouldn't afford a lawyer to go out and get the shorts. Well, I don't know if it was Tom a lawyer. I'm just get... saying. I'm just saying they got him back. We know that they got him back somehow. I don't. But we. That's what we said in the episode. Ow. I don't know. It was never filmed. Yeah. Filmed. How do you? How do we know? Oh. I don't. Uh... I, I would like to believe. I would like to believe that Rocky still has them, but yeah. I find it hard to believe that if the events, the events that took place in the movies that we saw. It's unlikely that he, that Tommy was like, "Here's, here you go." It's true. You yeah, know? maybe maybe kept them, kept them until he died. <laughs> In high school, I had this guy that uh, we exchanged game consoles. He had one kind, and I had the other, and we traded. And then we had a huge falling out mm. in the middle of our trade. We did have to get an intermediary to do the exchange. There you go. Well, actually, my adapter broke under his care so he refused to exchange until he replaced it and it was a big issue so <laughs> oh yeah. wow serious business yeah that's uh just a just a little nugget of, of information <laughs> that the, the, the listeners really need to know <laughs> this is officially is the longest conversation about shorts in the rocky series has ever taken place i like it So yeah, I got a nice butt. For an Italian kid. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Well, that's my beef with these new style shorts. You can't see their butt. You can't tell. Oh. You have been this far away from home. And that don't matter. What matters is what you leave in that ring and what you take back with you. Do you know what that is? Pride and knowing that you did your best and you're doing it for yourself. Not for me, not your father's memory, but for you. I can see in your eyes, you're going to do it. Let's go now. Batman. So that was a nice little scene again for our listeners. They were doing this like swaying back and forth, looking each other in the eyes while Rocky was giving that speech that uh, every fighter needs to hear from their trainer. I I would say Rocky, he's a good boxing trainer in terms of like, here's these drills or like maybe during the fight giving advice, but that's not his strong suit. I'm not saying he's bad at those things. Rocky is basically like Adonis's like psychologist or life coach Mm. type of thing. Like he Rocky deals with the head stuff and like, cause Rocky knows Rocky's been in his shoes. He knows that position, not the exact position, but like Rocky's been through this. He knows what he's thinking. He gives that advice to, to help Adonis like have his head in the right spot. And I thought his like little speech to Adonis there was like really short, concise to the point, really well done. Agreed. Agreed. And I think uh, he should be a life coach in the yeah. next movie. Oh yeah, maybe we, uh, Rocky Seven, the life coach. Yeah, that's right. Yep, yep. <laughs> the, the thumb breaking business is not a long term career. Oh, <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Just as a, a note here. Um, you're supposed to have like a full warm up before a fight. A full what? You should have a full warm up before a fight. Like you should come out to the ring with a full sweat going. Oh, really? be like fully warmed up, ready to go. Yeah, like just like they they like that scene of him punching, you see that all the time on TV for real fights, but like even before that, you need to have like a He's like he's kind of dry here. He doesn't he seems tense. He's going to seem tense in the fight. Like he, it's important to have that warm up and they didn't show that. Okay, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe it already happened. I didn't know that. But I didn't know that either. Good point. Yeah. But he should have a full sweat on. Now, 
I'm gonna say that most boxing movies wouldn't do that, but if like you wanted to have the authenticity there, that would have been a good way to do it. Interesting. You do know about those things. <laughs> okay, so for our listeners, what they're doing right now is the Team Creed are walking out. It's kind of a cool shot because you got the camera behind the crew as they're walking uh, to the arena. I'd always get nervous during And it must like be this. the, uh, it must be England's like, uh... Oh, this isn't in England! Oh, oh what? Oh, like I don't, like there's a, uh, there's a screw up. There's a sign that says exit. They don't have those in England. There's no such thing as a sign with the word exit. In Europe, there's a very really? specific thing. It's, it, it's like it's not in words. It's like a pic- picture of a guy, and then and like you could Google this like European exit sign, and mm-hmm. then an arrow, and then a doorway, mm-hmm. so like anyone can see it. I'm just looking up towards the. Uh... Well, clearly they didn't film. That's that's a really good call. Good call. It says film. But yeah, it does say that. That the, must uh... be um, Great Britain's. Oh yeah, we'll have to. I guess uh, Brian Grankle or Greg... well, they, they might have had some parts of it in England. But this hallway is not in England. Okay, you will not have a red exit sign like this. Interesting. Well, uh, we well, know... yeah, they wouldn't have had to. I it it would surprise me. If... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I just I, I don't know. I I would never have known that uh, having never lived in Europe. Um, but yeah, I I think the majority of this film was filmed in Philadelphia, so. Maybe those outdoor shots and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But th- where they had that press conference, I'd be interested to know what building that was. Looks like that. You can see it. I guess not. Mm, there's a glare on it yeah. a little bit, but I think I know what you, what you mean. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me that they didn't film it in, in uh, England, but but those are the little details that... The deets. The deets. Yeah. Very that, important. It should be caught. Uh, I... But I'm assuming that what we're hearing in the background is their national anthem. I I have no idea. No? no. No, the God Save the Queen is their national anthem. Oh, okay. It's <laughs> like this their sports thing. Okay. <laughs> How dare you not know everything about every culture in every country? <laughs> um, T- typical yeah, typical still- Americans, no. <laughs> It, you're, let me tell you that you're not wrong. However, the Russian national anthem is actually pretty awesome. It is I awesome. Just still remember that from yeah. It is awesome. You, have you heard like the? I listened to it not too long ago, but in English. What um, like say? there's like the English translation. Um, it is hilarious because several times they're like the Soviet Union will endure forever. <laughs> That's funny. I think our public will ever endure. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's see if we can get to my favorite parts coming up, you guys. Oh, it, okay, okay, okay. So we'll keep going. It's not before the fight. I mean, it's not during yeah. the fight, or is it before the fight? It's before the fight. Okay. That's good. That's perfect. We'll stop it right after. I would always get nervous during times like this, but that's normal. And it's going to give you energy. Very normal. Very normal. All right, so the crowd's booing him now. I know booing does happen, but why would they? Are they just that? I guess that's normal. Don't mute it. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I'll go back. Pause it. Pause it. You gotta go back because this is my favorite part. This. Oh, oh, the song. Um. But say what you're gonna say. Oh, I was just gonna say. The song. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm just confused. What your favorite? Don't tell me. I just. I apologize for for muting it. Okay, we'll just keep playing. We'll keep playing. We'll we'll keep playing. I won't pause. You no, tell. No, no, no. I. Yeah. Well, no, but you were setting it up. You were setting it up. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, I was just going to say that the crowd's booing them as they're going towards the uh, the ring, and uh, it's pretty, uh, 
pretty strong boos. I mean, I know he's a foreigner. He's you know he's from the states, but he hasn't said anything derogatory about the champion or anything like that. Like it's just interesting that like. I know you're going to root for your guy, but like I watch hockey. That's the only sport I really watch, okay? But I never I never find it within me, even when I go to live games, I never boo. I never boo the opponent. I always wish them the best because I want my team to beat the best. You know what I mean? I don't – it's a weird concept. I don't – there's players I don't like. But you're I guess a better I, person no, than most people. I don't, I don't know about that. Most Montreal hockey people like that, though. I heard Montreal fans are brutal. They are. No, and I don't, I don't like when they do that. Actually, that's just – maybe it is me. I don't like booing. I, I don't like I don't like the idea of it. I like cheering. Yeah, nice guy. I, I like cheering, but they're just people too who yeah. are trying to do their best in competition. I don't I don't see the need to say boo boo on you. Yeah, you ever watched that Princess Bride? It's been a long time, but yeah. You know when she does a boo. boo. One thing I liked um, with Rock. So <laughs> say that again, Kyle. That reminds me of Simpsons when, like, with Boo Room. I miss that. Are you there? Yeah, no, I just missed. Are the you froze up? Yeah, my my uh, my internet's just. Oh, uh, I was just talking about. I, I had a couple. Of things. I'm still here. Okay. I, I heard you. Uh, did you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you now. <laughs> okay. Um, that's one thing I liked about Rocky IV when you got booed hardcore uh, by the, the Soviet audience. One detail they got right was uh, in Russia, they whistle instead of booing. Mm. Like whistling is a form of booing there. And they had people whistling. They oh. made a point of showing that. I thought I that was cool. Oh, it's okay. like someone researched. That's great. Oh, unlike us, they actually researched. That's good. <laughs> That's good. All right. Let's play, uh, let's play your favorite part of your <laughs> Yeah, it's the walkout song. Okay, okay. We'll keep it playing. So... You go. You can speak over it if there's no real talking here. I don't know if there are any other like '90s, early 2000s uh, rap bands that are listeners, but if there are, they will recognize this song, and it's a, an amazing choice. Who is it? Tupac. It's a 20-year-old song. At the, can you guys hear me? Is yeah, it, yeah, I, yeah. It's Tupac's Hail Mary. Nice. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, Which... Sorry, say that again, Kyle? Tupac's Hail Mary. Yeah, it's a 20-year-old song. I said when it comes to rap, I'm quite ignorant. <laughs> me too. You guys. Next to Rocky, Tupac is my like second love. Mm. So this, the moment I heard that, the second that I heard that, because I, again, Creed not being my favorite, and I heard that, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Because this is 2015. Tupac's Hail Mary was like, a, at this point, 20 years old. Like they're using a super old song and like an amazing one. And, um, and like Nas was on the soundtrack and stuff like that. So like their musical choices are really good. I, it seems like, um, athletes use more um, current music when they do their walkouts, but I loved this because it was, I like old things and it was a 20 year old song and it's like the best rapper that ever lived. That's cool. Um, no, that's great. No, so no, good. no. So that's I good. don't know. I hope, I hope there are other listeners that, that, um, that enjoy that era rap like me. And I'm sure there is. And, and if there isn't, that's well. fine. Well, I'm sure too far from going watching that from the secret hideout. What's that, Kyle? I'm sure Tupac enjoyed seeing his song there from his secret hideout. <laughs> I wish. Oh, I wish. <laughs> That's great. Oh, yeah, he's alive and well. Well, it's a good spot to end it because we're about to get the entrance of the opponent, of course, Pretty Boy. And I think what we'll probably do... 
maybe the next episode will be a full on just a fight. I don't know. It's tough to I know I I can see it being two episodes. It's gonna to have to be two episodes. And that would be it's weird to think we're almost that's it. Two more episodes, we're done. Creed. Because it, Unless we do Ricky's um walk out. Like so we get right up to the fight and then maybe Okay. Yeah, yeah. That, that's fine. You don't know? One one question I'd like to ask is if you guys were a famous boxer, just real quick, what would your walkout song be? I think I've been asked that before. Mine would be Tupac's Hit Him Up. Oh. See, okay, I'll let Ryan think about his. Um, I, I kind of want to go the poly route of having a totally absurd song <laughs> to walk out to, just because I, I like being that way. And so I'd have like something for like Billy Joel, like Uptown Girl or something like that. <laughs> Uptown Girl, living in her little white bread. <laughs> That'd be great. I don't know. I'd have to, I'd, let me mull it over. That's uh, awesome. Maybe like Eminem, Lose Yourself or something. I know it's cliche, but it is a really good pump up song. Mm. All right. Let's, uh, yeah, it let's, is. Let's see. That's, that's true. Pretty Boy Walk Out. This is what you want, what you got, and I want you to enjoy it, okay? Do that. This is quite the crowd. Yeah, they're already calling him out. If she ain't, she got to go. Tell them don't waste my time. Police wanna stop me, search my clothes. What? Tell them don't waste my time. If it ain't money, I ain't involved. No. Tell them. Just gonna turn down the song a little bit so it doesn't get blocked too much. <laughs> oh, I remember that flame scene being shown in the trailer. Anybody else remember that in the trailer? They showed that. I don't. I is he supposed to? So he's there. Um, is he supposed to be of like, you know, like a the term gypsy isn't used anymore, but like gypsy traveler type? Hmm. Like, is that what this is? A pikey is what they use. What do they say? <laughs> so, I'll say a pikey. That's a uh, Tyson Fury, the current champion, comes from pikey stock. Oh, okay. Stock. I mean, he has like the his accent is like sort of that way, so I didn't know that the flame flower. That's the only reason I wondered. All right, so yeah, I don't know. So pretty boy, know. pretty uh, I think pretty. He's just trying to like show him. I keep calling him pretty boy, so it's just pretty Ricky. Colin is coming out, and he's wearing all black in his robe. His team's wearing all black with white lettering. They call him pretty boy Ricky Conlon too, don't oh, okay. they? Okay. Oh. So the crowd's cheering the class. Conlin, Conlin. This is a packed, enormous arena as yeah. well. Yeah, big crowd. It, it's funny, Conlin does this little move where he walks over and leans against the side of the ropes. And that's so telling. Like, he's really trying to be like the domineering alpha male kind of guy he's just so and i'm like look i'm relaxed i'm good i'm comfortable i know you're not i thought the same thing exactly. i'm in your face this is his like, territory the, the, in the uh inter like in the conference, interrupting him all, all the time like he's just like he is all over this guy he has no respect for him whatsoever this shot actually ryan that you have it paused on also just uh, kind of drills down for us the tiny little corner of Creed versus mm. this, big, this big entourage that Conlon has in the opposite corner. Well, he needs five guys to carry like his belt. One eighth of Clubber Lang's entourage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll stop it there. That's a good part to stop because the fight's going to roll in. So we'll probably do fight part one. Like, and then, like, the build up, and then just as that tempo of 
what's going to happen. Because there's a little bit of an ending after the fight. So we'll do to fight part one and then fight part two leading to the end of the film. Uh, that's crazy. I, I, for some reason, I thought we had more episodes left on this film. But I guess we kind of really don't. The fights usually go pretty quick because it's hard to obviously podcast about the fight other than just... We're, we always end up doing an okay job, but I get nervous when it comes to the fight time because mm-hmm. when translation to an audio podcast is kind of like uh, Adonis is punching now, <laughs> Pretty's uh, punching. So obviously, this, this will be. Uh, <laughs> I will recommend if people want to watch us commentate on it. You know, it, it might be a good time to watch the video because we're going to probably mute a lot of the fighting and we can talk over the fight as it's happening and just mention a couple things here and there because. Uh, yeah, hearing the punches is just to hear the punches doesn't do anything. Yeah. I'm I excited. have an idea for future episode. Ooh. Okay. Maybe we'll talk off camera about it. Yeah. I just okay. had a really good I think it's a good idea. Sure. All right. Well, that was fun. Um, yeah, well, Greg's right. This last part has gone by very fast. It's funny how we're watching this now. It's, it just seems like since the... Hey, if you're uh, if you're gonna fight, I'm gonna fight type thing. That scene, it seems like from that moment on, that that's the win moment of this film. Uh, it's gone by very quickly. You guys think the same thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, it's like yeah, and he he's right. Like this, the first three quarters of the movie are like, mm. but then yeah, this it, it is better mm-hmm. from then on. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, that's everything. If you want to, uh, oh, yeah, if you want to send us an email, by all means, gtdwithrr at gmail.com. Uh, if you'd like to support us on Patreon, again, what that does ultimately just helps pay for the feed. It's not free. And maybe I get a couple dollars for all my editing because it takes forever. Uh, and uh, if you want to watch the live feeds and stuff, come check out uh, Patreon as well because these videos that we record live uh, during this. During this video, we did record on Twitter and on our YouTube page, so maybe that might account for some of the lag. I apologize; it's probably my fault because I can't wait till I go back to Victoria because we're getting I'm getting incredible internet. Like right now, I'm only uploading, downloading like 120 megabytes or whatever this MP, whatever it is. But the internet that we got lined up for us when we go move back is a gig per, so it's like going to be ten times faster. So the streaming nice. will be yeah. So anyways. Well, it's your turn, Katie. Ding, ding. Awesome. All right, guys, thanks so much. Stick around. I'm going to stop streaming, but you guys stick around.